drum roll. We got her done. We got that. We got that. We got that fixed. We took the one out. This is the one that was in there. I pulled it out and put a new one in there. Done. Got her done. I know you're going to be saying, well, how come you didn't show us how you did that? Okay, let's do it. This is the one we took out. This is the... That's the blueprint. Uh, I had to draw something up right there. I don't know if we can get a visual on that or not. But, that that's this thing uh, right here. I done already draw a picture of it, gender. It's uh, two and one eighth inch long. Put the ruler to it. It's two and an eighth inch long. And the part that was down in the housing, the is from there down. So the part that sticks out, the part that we use, is one and one half inch. If you set the roller down there on one and a half and come down there, that's how much you need to protrude. Check it on this one. It's one and a half inches. Check it on the one I just done. It's one and a half inches. Got her done. Uh, this is the, that's the example we had. Had I not had one of these, I could have done some measuring. And this right here goes on there like that. And it, it's, it's actually forgiven of a few thousandths there, you know, a little bit. Uh, uh, you, do, you do not want it too long that when it goes down and bottoms out that this would hit this collar. You, you, that's the important measure, and then when this comes out, you don't want it too short that it does not have enough room here to actually capture the the collar. The what I did, uh, let's just go for a little show and tell, and these right here are 200 and. The 249 thousandths. Okay, the one I took out is I mocked that. It's 249 thousandths. That's the one I took out. Right on the money. Zero. Exactly. No getting around it. And the, the one that I, the material I'm using is 249 thousandths exactly on the zero. No getting around it. So, we're working with exactly the same size material, and I'm assuming by sawing up a couple of these, you know, I think it's about 10, 18 is probably what that was. Well, uh, you know, uh, and this was, that was a pretty fair press fit, even though it was easy to pull out. The, um, and just using what information I had, I didn't think that it was tight enough. I, I thought it should have a little more fit. So what I've done is I used, I guess you could call it redneck knurling. And I, I do it in the vise over there. And I'm just going to show you. i just show you here with this V-block. The device jaws over there would be, let's just say, let's do it sideways here. The vice jaws, when you close them up to about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe an eighth, leave that much gap to where that this, where that this raw piece of material will, it will be like that right there. But there'll be enough gap right there to, if you, if you do it on a flat surface here. You tend to, any indent that you put on top, when you turn it over and indent it again, you'll erase that one. But if you've got a little gap there, you can protect that. So that's what I did here. That was in that little gap, and this is the part that goes in the hole. And, and in order to get that knurl, and that's the vice jaw serration. There'll be four of them there. And what I've done is put that in the vise right there. And then, 
I'm going to put it up here so you can see it. And put this round hardened punch right on top of that right there and strike it with the hammer. Okay, move up here and strike it with the hammer again. Turn it completely over and do repeat it on the other side and you end up with uh, serrations, a neural, so to speak. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> I mean, I could put it in a lathe and knurl it, but not everyone has a lathe. So this is a, if you're out there in the backyard shop uh, and you need something to be a little bit oversized and you do not have a lathe, then, then this is a very good way, acceptable way to increase the size on a shaft. A fixed shaft, let's say. The uh, uh, and and I will do all of these like that because I like a little bit more interference fit. And what I did while I was uh, making those, I knew that this the part that sticks out would be one and a half inches long. So I cut a piece of pipe that just fitted on that that's one and a half inches long. So I put that there, put this down in there, and then you, if you're just in the backyard shop, strike it with the hammer till it levels out with your, let's say, uh, jig. Call it a jig. When it gets to that length, then you're at the correct length. No damage to the part or the thing, and when you measure it, it's exactly one and a half inches. All of them will be the same. And if you put that on the old one, it's exactly the same. Now, not to be not to be cutting any corners, so to speak, to show you actually how I did that. Here's the one that we are we are going to use this one. If you remember. We are going to use this one on the bailing wire engine. And it's the one that's got the, it's broke off, level with the thing right there, which that's a little more of a problem getting out than this one is. So, in, in, the, last, in the last video, if you remember, we talked about that. Okay, let's see. You're going to need a blueprint. In this case, it's uh, one of them hand-drawn, and it's not to scale. You know, it's just one of them uh, blueprints that you actually can work with and get something done. And uh, so what I've done is from the inside hole right here, from the inside of this hole to the inside of that hole is three and three-eighths. Okay, I needed half of that in order to get the center line, which would be one and uh, eleven-sixteenths. Okay, and then I measured... Uh, you can put a you can put a dowel in here to get they get that up to size the correct size it's uh, five sixteenths. Put that in there. I've laid it aside over there. Where is my five sixteenths dowel? And I've laid it aside. But just just for show and tell, that would be in there. And you measure from the center line of that up to the center line of that. Okay, that measurement was one and one quarter inch from center line to center line. Oh, this is going to get good now. So what I did is I come over on the back and figured out my center line and my one and a quarter inch from the center here to the center of that pin on the back side. And then I drilled a hole right in the center. Uh, I, I didn't even check the drill size. It just looked like a eighth of an inch. So I drilled that hole in there, and I do have this drift punch, which is a little bit smaller. It's, it's a free fitting. Now, well, we've still got the thing in there, and it's time to get it out and put this new one in there. So what you do is bring that over there. The, uh, nah, we ain't gonna need that. Let's just knock it out of there. Let's just get her out of there. Uh, we'll use that putting the other one in. But you put this in the back side. Actually, when you're drilling through here, you will come to a void between this housing and the end of this pin here. So you'll know when you drilled through there if it's not been replaced. But that's right in there. 
Oh, that fell right out. There it is. That would have probably been easy to get out some other way. Now, that was too loose, I think. But we got that. We got that piece out. And uh, now we've got a free hole in yonder. There's no pressure on the back side of this, no oil in here, nothing, so that hole will not be of any consequence. No need to plug that hole up. Now we have got the new pin completed. It's time to install it. So you put it right in there. You put this right on here, like so. And now we'll use this. Bring that up there for a support and drive it home. Level with that, remove the jig, and we've got a pin installed. And I did feel some resistance when I drove that in there, so I do know it is a tight fit. That's the way you do it. Let's just say we got her done. And from here on the east coast of Arkansas, shop dog Sam.